We are joined now by Walker Waldman from American Family Association. Walker, thanks so much for taking time to join us today. Dr. Brown, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, let me ask you a question. I 100% agree with the outrage over the halftime show. What surprises me, though, are people are su- that, that people are so surprised because the halftime shows have not exactly been holy for some years now. And then we have the whole culture, you know, with the cheerleaders and the, you know, and just the the raunchy music videos. To me, this it's it's ugly, it's ridiculous, it's degrading, it's inappropriate, but it's hardly surprising. You guys have been on the front lines of the moral battles for years. What's your take, Walker? Well, it's definitely not surprising. I mean, this 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 type of uh, obscene halftime show has been going on for years now. Yeah. Uh, Some would even argue it's been going on for over a decade now. Um, but I think what's most frustrating for people who were upset about the halftime show, and I actually cut the TV off. I saw I saw what was coming, and so I cut the TV off during yep. halftime. Um, but I think what's most frustrating is that every year consumers complain about it. I mean, right. you hardly ever see you know thousands of people going, "Yay, great halftime show!" I like seeing explicit things on the television. No, everybody goes, "That's disgusting." My children were in the living room. I'm embarrassed. But what's frustrating is that the NFL and others don't listen to the consumers. Right. So you have also been on the front lines of organizing petitions, uh, starting with Don Wildman, Tim Wildman, Walker Wildman now, to the American Family Association, calling people to say, hey, let's unify and let's just share our voice. We're, We're not trying to strong arm people. We're not trying to force everyone to be Christian, but we're saying, hey, these things offend us. These things concern us. And if you want our business, we're asking you to be sensitive to this as well. Now, there are also concerns with with a lot of LGBTQ themes and the commercials and advertising through the event. That's another thing. But but what can Christians do now in an organized way to to raise their voice to just help push back against this godless tide in our culture? Well, we have to we have to share our our voice and our concerns, and whether that's uh, whether we think that's going to have an effect or not is really irrelevant. We should still do it. And one of the ways we've been doing it, for example, just a week ago, we sent an email. We being a, a one million moms, which is a division of American Family Association, right? One million moms sent an email out asking her, uh, our supporters to uh, email the NFL and urge them to keep the Super Bowl clean. Uh, believe it or not, keep the Super Bowl advertising clean, including yeah. the halftime show. And so we did that. We had over over 20,000 moms and parents sign that petition. So our voice was heard. Uh, they just apparently didn't listen. Yeah. So where are you going from here? What's your strategy? What's your plan to raise consciousness and to raise a voice of godly protest? Well, uh, a lot of people are afraid of this word, but the word boycott is really one of the most effective tools that we have left, and we have to be careful with it. You, you could, there is such thing as too much boycotting Correct. to where people don't listen to you anymore. But, uh, but in a sense, we have to boycott on our own terms. So each family is going to have to decide what, what is enough, what is too much. And if you think about it, well, consumers all across from all different backgrounds they boycott for various reasons. If if, right. the, if the burger joint messes up your burger three times in a row, well, then you're probably going to boycott that burger joint, at least for the time being. Mm-hmm. So we all have different, if you buy tennis shoes and they keep tearing up, then you don't buy those tennis shoes anymore. So consumers and Christians, we're just going to have to pick, you know, what, what we want to watch. And unfortunately, it's getting to the point where a lot of times we might just have to cut the TV off. Yeah, uh, for sure. And that wouldn't be the end of the world if we stop watching certain things on computer and, and, and cell phone and TV. But, you know, look, even when people post reviews, that's not boycotting, but it is sending out a message. It's saying, hey, I bought this product and it really stunk and I want to warn others that it's not the way it's posted in the review. It keeps breaking. And then when you read, you know, you're going to buy something and it only has two, two out of five star reviews and you see a hundred one star reviews saying the product is cheap and doesn't work. Well, someone's not going to buy it. So we, we are making our views known. And again, it's not to strong arm. 
It's not to force someone and say, you must be Christian. It's simply to say, hey, you are in this for the money. And if you are concerned about our business, then be concerned about what matters to us. Let me ask you one last question. Is, is say, Pepsi, which was responsible for this halftime show, uh, and I'm sure, I'm sure in conjunction with the NFL. So Pepsi and NFL, are they this blind to where so many of us stand? Or do they have an agenda to propagate this? Or is it just that the world is so worldly that the world loves this? What, what do you think? Well, I think it's a combination of the two. I think that I think that the the NFL along with Pepsi, I think that there I think there is a cultural agenda here, and that is to put to push uh, sexually explicit material in front of the consumer's eyes, mm-hmm. as including people under the age. Um, to push it in front of their eyes to where it becomes normal, to where this type of behavior becomes normal. I think that's when you get into spiritual warfare and the battle we have for the soul of our country. But also, um, I think that that there is a there is uh, there are people out there who who like that kind of thing. I mean, you look at the, at the the porn addiction uh, epidemic that we have in our country. There's obviously consumers who like that kind of material. So I think it's a combination of both. Um, it's hard to really nail down, but at the end of the day, Christians have to be on guard about about what we're what we're viewing. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing to remind ourselves is is it is up to us what we watch and don't watch, what we listen to and don't listen to, what we participate in or not. The world is always going to be worldly, but if we don't raise our voices and take stands, then the world is going to get even more worldly, and then it'll be even harder for us to live out our faith in the midst of this world. Hey, where's the best place for folks to go to follow what the American Family Association is doing? Yeah, the easiest way to, to connect with us is just visit our website, afa.net, afa.net. There you can sign up for our emails and stay up to date on all things that we're doing American Family Association. Yeah, and I've, I've signed many a petition with joy and said, hey, let's stand together and make a difference. Hey, mm-hmm. thanks for weighing in and keep up the great work. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Sure God thing. God bless.